Good afternoon, Dr. Amlan. Good afternoon. Okay. You can unmute and you can speak. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, almost uh, two minutes uh, to go. Uh, okay. We will start the session. Uh, respected speaker, uh, Dr. Um, Amlan Das, uh, Associate Professor, Associate Professor of Department of Zoology, University of uh, Calcutta, West Bengal. And also dear participant, uh, once again, I welcome all of you for our three days web workshop come training on edible insect. We have a team of uh, edible insect and non-conventional food as a nutrition pack and livelihood security. Uh, in this connection, we are here on second day afternoon session. Uh, it will be delivered by Dr. Amlan Das. So before going further, I would like to request uh, Dr. T. Sandibala, organizing secretary of this uh, three days uh, web workshop come training on edible insect uh, to introduce the speaker, uh, Madam, please. Good afternoon, everyone. And good afternoon, Dr. Amlandas. And thank you very much. And once again, I welcome you all in these uh, three days <clears throat> uh, web uh, workshop, uh, come training on edible insect. And I'm very thankful for accepting my proposal to be a uh, part of this work.
video in general in the internet. So now it's coming back. Am I audible to? Am I audible? Yeah, audible. So, Dr. Alman Das, I'll continue. He is uh, bad at Dr. Das, postal uh, from the Department of Physiology, University of Shio, <coughs> from Brazil. He has published many uh, reputed, uh, in the reputed peer revision more than uh, uh, for, uh, this is for the, his last uh, ten year publication is twenty uh, more pieces paper and nine articles uh, in the national and international peer review journal and he is also a, a very prestigious award some of them are Raman in uh, Indo US doctoral award that. In this journal visiting scientist award boycott that is postdoctoral award from Brazil. And so we are very uh, grateful to have you, sir, to be a part of this work. And now I have a display from Dr. Almas, please. Sorry, Doctor Ramos. Yeah, no, so you are here. Now you can. Uh, hello, sir. Actually, uh, Madam has uh, briefed about your bio data, and now you can start the session. Oh, now you can to. unmute and you can start. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Hello, hello, yes. madam. Yes, it's audible. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, it's audible. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am thankful to uh, Professor Shantibala and Dr. P. Raja for inviting me to present my talk in this uh, three-day workshop on edible insects and non-conventional food as, human, as a nutrient pack and livelihood security. Uh, as a speaker of nutritional pack as genuine food in this theme, I am presenting my uh, topic uh, related to nutritional pack of the genuine, uh, nutritional pack of as, as, uh, insects as a genuine food. And I will focus on how um, the grasshopper farming uh, can be possible to establish in our country. Um, based on this, uh, my topic uh, will be concentrated um, in, in these two aspects. Uh, before look, uh, before uh, presenting the uh, my uh, topic on grasshopper farming, we can concentrate about the global scenario on the food consumptions and the foods that's required in our countries or in the world and in our country. If we see that from 2000 to 2090, <clears throat> during this year, the global uh, food requirement is 767, near about 767 uh, populations and um, in, in crores and near about in 2050, the population, the world population will 
grows up to thousand crores of people. And if we see the Indian scenario, you can see that Indian population near about 136 crores and in 2050, it can be projected that 200 crores people will be there in India. So in India, they are required a huge amount of food and these foods, among these foods, um, if we see the, if we look at the um, billion, uh, two, near about 258 billion tons of food was required in 2009 and 10, and in 2019 and 20, during these periods, so we required near about three, 301 million tons and in, in expected in 2020 and 30, um, India required three, 330 million tons of food grains. Among these food grains, are, <clears throat> uh, the main important thing is that, that we are, uh, we required a, a supply of a steady supply of protein quality food. I mean, protein requirement or the protein as food that, uh, protein as food in, 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 in the forms of meats, in the forms of eggs or in the forms of uh, fishes, uh, it requires uh, the requirement of these foods growing high day by day, but uh, this, the requirement doesn't me uh, meet the demand. So we require some alternative source of proteins. And based on these, our, if we see that uh, alternative animal protein, uh, there are alternative food, maybe the insects, which we can, which we can rear, which we can breed, which we can <coughs> uh, culture in captivity, or we can harvest the insects from the wild. So, if we look, why this initiative is essential? As we all already said, that in 2050, it is predicted that nine to ten billion peoples um, of the world will be based on the agroecosystem. Uh, but our land, our water, and uh, the fish, and the forest, and the, all the biodiversity resources will not be increased so much. So there should be some alternative source of renewable, uh, 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 alternative source of proteins or other forms of proteins. Uh, if we see the global livestock, already we have the enormous achievement in the uh, cattle rearing, the pig rearing, the meat uh, for the production of the meats, but that is not sufficient in coming days. As for beef and pork, is expected to double in 2020s, and um, totally, and we require the alternative source of these meats also. So, if we look at the time scale, um, the quantity and the demand, we see from 2010 to 2050 the uh, if we see the plot, um, the yellow line shows the uh, fruit production with the uh, fruit production in current year in the recent times, and the green line shows the population. So the areas that the red zone is the shortage of the food. So in the sh in this shortage of the food, a considerable amount is required that the protein food shortage is also is very much important here. So to meet the shortage of the protein rich food, we need the production of alternative proteins in our diets. Uh, in published journals, in published, uh, in published uh, 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 outcomes of some research objectives from around the world, we see that the, the people suggested that the funding of locusts or farming of the crickets and the other, other insects could be an <clears throat> alternative form of affordable, called alternative form of proteins of the fruits in affordable price. So keeping in mind, uh, there is a possibility of production of insects with greater efficacy um, and th uh, the greater efficacy means we can use the lower resources, we can use the uh, less environmental risks, we can produce the insects. If we see 
the production of insects uh, there are many possibilities in production of insects for example uh, we can produce the insects through um, uh, or we can acquire the insects through wild harvesting or we can produce the insects through mass culture so uh, what kind of insects you have to produce if we see that there are a lot of diversity in insects in our world um, but we have to select which insects should be cultured in the in captive breeding or in mass rearing uh, before going that uh, we can say that why insects is important uh, if you see the biology of the insects uh, we can see that the insects can be potential alternative form of the conventional livestock that can provide the possible benefits like the greater efficacy that I already have said that the insects can be produced with greater efficacy uh, as the feed consumption and the body mass, uh, feed consumption to the body mass and the body mass to the processed meat conversion ratio in the insects is very high. It means that what amount we uh, what amount feed is required to produce the unit amount of body mass in case of cow, whereas in case of pig and in case of insects, if we see the competitive analysis, we can say that the, in the production amount or the requirement of the feed for unit amount of protein in case of insects is required very less than that of pigs and cows. So insects can be produced with greater efficacy by utilizing the less resources amount. Not, not, not in the resource amount for the feed, but the requirement of the other resources like the waters is also required very less in production of the insects protein than pigs or the cows. The other important thing is the emission of the greenhouse gases that the insects produce lesser amount of greenhouse gases than the pigs and the cows. So insects are, uh, insects are good for, or is the beneficial for the environment for production of the meat than the beef or the cows, than, than the beef or the pork. Um, these, uh, the, these are the picture which shows that to get the one kg of meat from cow and one kg of meat from pig, one kg of meat from hens and one kg of meat from other insects, we can see that less amount of water as well as the feed is required for insects than the hens or the chickens and the fox or the cows. So in this aspects, insects are beneficial for production of the, for production of his meat than other livestock. It, 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 it will improve the food security because as, as in our previous slides, we have told that uh, in 2050, we have the nine to 10 billion of peoples in the world. So it requires near about double of proteins amount than the recent past. And the next thing is that the production of insect requires less cost because the infrastructural development or infrastructural needs or the requirements of the gadget or is required in less amount so we can invest a lower amount of money to be to get a bigger amount of um, or a larger amount of protein biomass from the insects if we see that the kilos of the if we see that the kilos of the food needed to produce one kilo of meat, we can see that then the beef pork on the meat or, or, the, or the chickens if from insects, we can guess we can guess greater amount of meat by investing lesser amount of water and lesser amount of other food sources. For example, the higher uh, and, and another important thing is that that uh, they are uh, rich in proteins than the other livestock in comparative, or in some cases they may be uh, they, they may tally with the beef uh, with, the, with the beef or the pork protein content, but in in if we see in other if we, if we consider the other aspects, the insects are insects are richer or insects are beneficial for us for production of them 
for production of its fleshes or production of its meats than the other livestock. So, for example, the 100 grams of beef contain 29 grams of proteins, but also 21 grams of fat. This is the important thing that from beef we can and get the fats too. But in insects, on the other hand, 100, 100 grams of grasshoppers contain 20 grams of proteins and only 6 grams of fat. It means that the fat content in protein, in fat content in insects is very less than that of the beef. So this is, in this point, insects is advantageous for its culture, its mass propagation, for its, for, 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 for its use as an alternative source of protein. Uh, uh, in the world or in or in in our country, um, this is the uh, this is the table that are uh, that I already said, and the another is aspect is that the insects can grow further, or uh, insects can grow fast faster than the other meat producing animals like chickens, beefs, or the pops because it's a growth a growth rate is uh, very high. It's re it's reproduction rate that is fake and it is very high. So we can get a higher number of, or higher amount of, or you can say the higher, higher number of animals or higher number of populations in shorter period. And it is environmental safely. And uh, so uh, as I already said that in, uh, for rearing of insects, it requires a lesser amount of money. So it is economically viable. If you look at the world, uh, world picture that uh, where the insects are being <coughs> consumed or are being reared or being harvested, um, this is an amalgamated figure from all over the world. We can see that from India, uh, the, the deeper, deep, deeper area than the Mexico's and in the China's and in other areas like in Brazil, India, in Central Africa and in Southeast Asia's, in the insect production by means of harvesting or by means of uh, mass production is very popular than the rest of the world. In Europe, um, in North America, uh, uh, their production of the insects is lesser than these of the countries like the Southeast Asia, China, India, uh, Mexico, and Brazil, and Central Africa. So uh, in my previous, uh, uh, sl uh, previous slides, we ha I have said that which insects we have to consider. Uh, worldwide, it has been it has been found that the coleopteran beetles are being consumed so much than other than the other groups of beetles, other groups of insects. For example, uh, the lepidopterans, the hymenopterans, orthopterans, hemipterans, isopterans, odonata, diptera, and the dictyopterans, and the other 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 insect groups are also eaten in the world. But the first three groups are the Coleoptera, Lepidoptera, Hymeroptera, and if you consider the Orthoptera in near about uh, equal amount in um, like the Hymenopteran insects. So these four groups of insects are very much popular in the world, which are being harvested or the reared in captivity. If you see uh, in the pictures, then this uh, pie diagram, if we, we can see the beetles occupy near about 38 percent of the world. Um, consuming among the world consuming insects. And after the beetles, there are caterpillars, lepidopter caterpillars near about 18%, and then the hymenopterans near about 14%, which includes the bees, wasps, and ants. Uh, basically, the ants, eggs, and in some, uh, in some parts, ants, the whole ants also. And the third most useful things that are being used or, or, or cultured or reared or harvested from the wild is the grasshoppers and locusts and crickets. These, all these groups are from Orthoptera. And I am interested to look into these groups and the Orthoptera, locusts and the crickets because I am working in these groups uh, since uh, 20 years. And I, um, I know that uh, these grasshoppers and locusts and crickets have some, and we all we know that these uh, locusts or these Orthoptera species have some special capabilities to produce a higher amount of biomass in shorter time because of its some definite biological properties. Uh, I'll come to that biological property later, uh, but you can say that grasshoppers, locusts, and the crickets are the most uh, mm, interesting, interesting species or interesting insects uh, to me for sustainable use of, uh, sustainable use of insects for this, uh, mm, for protein uh, propagation or protein 
um, manufacturing. Besides this, uh, there are other insects like cycads in case of hemiptera and some leaf hopper and plant hoppers and other, other groups of insects like termites, some odonets, some dipteran, fly, dipteran flies, larvae, and the other insects, they are also consumed or harvested or reared. Um, uh, 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 but there is some, there, there are no much report about their uh, commercial rearing of these groups that is dragonflies, flies, termites. Uh, yes, in some in some places, termites are also are also uh, cultured commercially. Uh, we know some beetles are uh, beetles are cultured commercially. Some lepidopteran caterpillars are also reared, are also cultured commercially. Um, but in, yes, the crickets are also reared very commercially. But uh, uh, less information. Uh, available in the uh, in the world that the look the, the grasshoppers are reared commercially, but there are information that re grasshoppers are reared can be reared and are good source of the proteins or the or the other minerals. If you see that the um, if you see comparatively from crickets to poultry to pox and the beef, and we see that, that crickets can produce the uh, the amount of crickets that the eighty percent of the cricket uh, of an individual of the cricket can be used, whereas uh, from poultry or from chickens, only 55% of its animal can be used, and the uh, uh, rest of the amount that is 45% uh, maybe the oestrage amount. Whereas in case of pork, it is near about 55% can be used, whereas in beef, only 40% are used. This comparison shows that crickets or the insects, uh, 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 mainly the crickets and grasshoppers, they, uh, the, the whole body, near about 80% of their body can be used for commercial purposes. Uh, here, is a, uh, here is a chart that, uh, that can show that, um, uh, that the insects groups uh, like coleopterans, uh, dipterans, hemipterans, lepidopterans, odonites, and orthopterans, you know, as like in my previous slides, there are uh, the, uh, we can see that their their protein amount and their comparative amount of the dry matter of their uh, of their proteins their We can see, or uh, if we compare these, um, uh, compare their uh, uh, nutritional uh, nutritional amounts, we can see that uh, proteins of the orthopterans are uh, near about 61 to 40, 61 to 64, 64 percent. Uh, and in dry matter, it is also uh, can be comparable to other groups of insects. And if you see their caloric value, it is very much uh, energetic or be very much uh, uh, calorie content, like 430 to four, near about 400, uh, over the 400 kilocalorie per 100 gram of meat. So my group is that, that uh, in which group that I am interested here, that orthopterans uh, uh, on, on, uh, in these groups, the crickets, the locusts, and the grasshoppers, all these groups, um, most of these cases in the literature, we have found that the house crickets and the cystocerca and the uh, serenium that is uh, used in the Mexico's in, as in Chapulin adults uh, and the uh, Rusvolina, that is the brown log and gas offer that is also used for, uh, uh, for human consumption of, or for feed production. If we see all over the world that uh, in some parts in the world, in some countries, we can see that in Australia, from Australia to United States to Canada, Thailand, Mexico, and in Netherlands, these kinds of uh, insects they are uh, from uh, from from uh, from ants to uh, from ants to mealworms to orthopterans. Several kinds of insects are being used and uh, for their high calorie caloric value. 
if you see the crude protein count rate among these uh, among these groups, uh, then uh, for example, the coleopteran, lepidopteran, hemipteran, homopteran, hymenopteran, odonata, and orthoptera, we can see that both the forms, that is the adult and the larvae form, are useful. And in some cases, the eggs are also useful for their um, high protein content. These are the fact ratio, fact, con uh, this is the fact that. Uh, on the pro percentage of the proteins that the insect orders have. If we see the uh, comparative analysis among the, uh, among the common, commonly used uh, protein sources in our diets, like the salmon or the fishes, the eggs and the beefs and the tofus, and the cricket and the mealworms, we can see the protein content is near about 31% in case of, uh, 31 gram in case of grasshoppers and crickets, whereas in mealworms it is near about 16%. It's very much comparable, or sometimes it is higher than other sources of proteins, other sources of uh, fishes, eggs, uh, beefs, or the tofus. And if you see, the fat content is very much lesser than the other protein sources. So the, the important fact is that that fat fat content is lesser in case of insects than the other protein sources. Um, if we see the saturated fat, saturated fat is also less in in insects than the other protein sources like the beefs or the, the salmon or the fishes or the eggs or other other uh, other protein sources uh, except the in, insects. Interestingly, the omega-3 fatty acids, which is good for our health, is very much uh, higher in case of protein, in case of insects than the other groups of uh, uh, other uh, protein sources. And the another important thing is fiber. Fiber is, uh, is very much rich in insects, which is useful, which is uh, beneficial for our diet. And these fat fiber, or fats, uh, these fibers are, uh, are present in the insects' um, fleshes than the other groups of protein sources. If we see the mineral contents in case of, uh, um, uh, if we compare the mineral contents uh, among the, uh, in, among the uh, grasshoppers and crickets uh, and the other, uh, other source of proteins like the milk, if we, see, uh, we can see that 71 milligram of calcium can be, can be achieved in, from the insects than that of uh, the same amount of uh, milk. Uh, that is 125 gram of calcium we can uh, we, we, we can get from the same amount of milk and if we consider the um, uh, if iron iron is higher uh, in case of insects than the spinaches in case of in case of fibers the fibers are also higher in insects than in other vegetables that is rich in protein that is uh, for example, the green beans. Uh, this is the, uh, the uh, this is a fact sheet that the other in other the micronutrients like the uh, phosphorus, zinc, magnesium, and the vitamins B1, B2, and B12 are also higher in in, in, in insects than the other groups of uh, other groups of protein sources like the um, or can be compared with the other sources of proteins like uh, like meat fish or eggs or milk etc so our uh, from 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 this uh, data so we can say that uh, uh, insect protein can, can be comparable and some extent it is uh, it is more advantageous for us uh, in consideration of uh, insect protein in our diet than the other meal, other protein sources like uh, um, um, fishes or meats or eggs or like this. Now, um, <clears throat> if you see the uh, this is the uh, grasshoppers farming that we have. Uh, uh, we are rearing the grasshoppers in our uh, laboratories or in our culture houses. And I will uh, concentrate on this grasshopper farming uh, in the in this second half of this uh, lecture. Uh, 
why we uh, consider the acridids uh, as a potential source of animal uh, as a potential source of animal protein as i already showed, uh, said that the grasshoppers have some uh, tremendous properties and the tremendous biological properties which makes us uh, 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 which is very much important for consideration of grasshoppers for an alternative source of protein grasshoppers uh, can be reared in captivity yes it is possible and the second thing is that uh, uh, we can use some strategies or we can use some um, very uh, very very common or very easy establishment we can establish some very common infrastructure to develop a grasshopper a viable grasshopper farm in our households or in some in our society and through mass culture of these grasshoppers we can use we can we can produce a huge number of biomass of grasshopper biomass in shorter period what will help this it will it will help uh it will help to uh, on some unconventional unconventional and unconventional animal protein source it is beneficial for our society especially the rural societies of india and it will uplift the social livelihood and it will benefit the poorer women in our society who can uh, by their household working who can develop the grasshopper farming in their areas in their houses in suburban areas in rural areas in urban areas whatever they uh, wherever they want to do or what uh, over where they have the facility to develop the grasshopper farming as in west bengal we are <clears throat> developing some grasshopper farms uh, uh, we are trying to develop some grasshopper farms with our government and in our laboratory and in our some other uh, uh, other places we are developing uh, we are developing and developed some grasshopper farms but in smaller scales we, we didn't develop in a great in a larger in a larger scales but uh, if some entrepreneurs are get involved in this uh, in this in this program then it would be a, a good revenue uh, it will it will it would it would earn a good revenue so uh, we can say that uh, grasshopper farming would be a potential um, a potential side business of the rural people uh if we see the strategies or what are the components uh, in rearing or, or farming the grasshoppers we can start from the uh, in uh, uh, production that is the breeding in breeding um, uh, we have to first we have to select the species which one is the ideal which species or which group of species of acridid species is uh, are ideal for rearing the selection of acridids is very much important because uh, in selection we have to consider the insects which are higher reproductive potential that is higher fecundity higher fertility higher growth rate that is their nymphal mortality should be less and their growth rate would be higher their egg mortality should be less in incubation period should be less they can be they can be reared in dense condition that is smaller spaces would be required for culture of a higher number of populations and of course uh, after doing that we have uh, we have to consider the multi volatile nature of the species because uh, volatility is an important fact because uh, if we consider the multi volatile species who can breed four or five times in a year then we can generate the insect biomass throughout the year recurrently but if we consider the uni volatile or bi volatile species then then um, we will get the we will get the species is only once or twice in a year so it is important in selection of the multi volatile species in the rear, in the rearing purposes or in mass rearing or mass culturing purposes so selection of the species or selection of the breeds is very much important 
uh, in consideration of the grasshopper farming. And uh, before after selection, we have to uh, measure some their biological some of their biological properties like growth rates, the amount of food they consume because uh, we have to use some um, weeds. We have to use uh, we have to use some grasses or we have to use some leaves for or wastes uh, for their food to uh, rearing for rearing. So uh, we have to calculate how much amount of food they consume per day. That is very important because we have to supply their we have to supply uh, 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 we have to supply them food uh, daily twice a day or thrice a day because they are voracious feeder. So we have to keep in mind that how much amount of food they consume per year or how much amount of food they consume per day because we have to keep ready that amount of food for their culture. So after production, we have to go for processing of the uh, processing of the uh, of their biomass. From breeding to processing of their biomass or breeding to uh, getting their um, biomass we have, we, uh, when we can when we incubate their eggs when we can uh, we, we can uh, incubate their eggs in some incubator or in if we can arrange the incubator we can incubate the eggs under the sunlight if the incubator can be Arrange then the egg uh, can be has you have to buy or you have to procure the incubator. Otherwise, we can incubate the eggs under sunlight if we don't have. The another thing is that we have to prepare some thatch and house or in larger scale we, we can use some concrete house where the aeration can be possible. Aeration, uh, aeration as well, pickle matters and, uh, and, the, and the other debris is, and the other wastes can be uh, way out. And there is some other consideration of there. Hygienic, that is how they are a hygiene condition. Um, also in the larval, in the, nymph, in the nymphal stages, and in the egg stages, we saw we saw that some mm, mm, uh, some pathogens like the some uh, maybe there are some there are some ants, there are some spiders, there are some fungus, and there are some other kinds of bacteria that are that may infest the grasshoppers' eggs. Or uh, in the grasshopper eggs, there are another another thing is that the, the some nematodes some nematodes uh, can infect the grasshopper eggs. So these are the uh, these are the things that we have to consider in our mind to uh, uh, for the for the uh, production uh, for the production processes that we have to take the uh, we have to take the uh, uh, we have to take some precautions of, against the microbial and the other chemical risks uh, for their production. In the processing, uh, uh, the processing can be. Uh, uh, maybe up to two parts. We can use the grasshopper body as a whole, and the other parts like the eggs, the, like the legs and the wings. We can de wings or the legs, the or the or separate the legs from their body part, and we can use only their body. In the process, the next step of the processing is the drying of the insects. The drying of the insect is an important part because uh, some temperature should be fixed in drying because uh, if we if we fix some uh, uh, higher range of temperature then protein may be denatured so we have to keep in mind that uh, temperature 
uh, uh, for the drawing of these insects is very much uh, important. But it is, it is, it is, it cannot be said that which temperature is uh, necessary because uh, it depends on the species to species. But more or less near about 38 to 40 degree or 42 degrees centigrade is, is would, 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 be, would be fine for their drying purposes. Or we can use uh, sunlight for their drying if we do if we don't have any drier system in our hand or in uh, in, in our rural areas where, the, where the, for the poorer pharma, farmers if they don't have any dryer they can dry the grasshopper or the wet biomass under the sunlight. The next thing is that analysis and calculations of its uh, analysis and calculation of its protein contents. Now, this is a this is a uh, uh, this is a bigger part of this of this process because in nutritional analysis we have to consider the protein, carbohydrate, fats, uh, minerals, vitamins, essential amino acids, all of these, and all of these require some special assistance and. Uh, uh, special assistance, but if we can provide, if, if we can inform the people that these species uh, uh, would be good for, uh, for rearing, uh, if we inform this to the farmers, to the rural farmers, they can develop or they can develop a uh, biomass production unit in their households. Uh, and we can, we can test that insects nutritional profiles in our laboratory or in other uh, testing houses and in, in, in return, they will get, get a higher nutrient-rich nutrient, nutrient -rich biomass from these grasshoppers. And the next thing is the market and the consumer prediction. Yes, human consumption, um, uh, human uh, prejudice uh, against the insect consumption is very much in, uh, in our country or in around the world. It is very, it is very uh, important to note and the market areas in our in, in, in our country uh, or in some other countries in other developed countries the insect market is growing but in our country uh, i can say that this mar this market is not growing so much till date because the people are not aware of it so we have to arrange some seminars we have to arrange some workshop uh, and through this workshop I, I i guess that the people will get informed that the insects rearing or insects mass culture can be possible and it would be a good source of protein so the farmers entrepreneurs small farmers entrepreneurs and the interested people can be involved in this program in near future i guess i hope so so the consumer and the market areas this is an important thing that we have to aware more people we have to have we have to have in some more more uh, seminars some more workshops to aware the people to aware our indian people to know to uh, to make them understand that the insects uh, insects can be possible source of nutrients or need insects can can be used a nutritional pack Another as important aspect is that uh, if we see the environmental uh, environmental linking for grasshopper farming, you can say that insects or the grasshoppers or locusts or the crickets can recycle the wastes, wastes from our kitchens, wastes from the weeds, and the other wastes that are not used, that are not used in our daily purposes, who, who, uh, which we we throw them in the dustbin so we can use that waste for conversion into the biomass. So this is the this is the thing that from production from production to the processing and processing uh, the, some industrial uh, entrepreneur can be linked with this processing. Some chemical testing labs can be involved in it, and then market consumers and the human prejudice, as well as some, uh, uh, if we consider some uh, environmental role in it or environmental, environmental aspects in it, we can say that the production of insects or production of grasshoppers or, or the crickets are very much advantageous for us for its uh, uh, propagation. So these are the mini livestock. We can say these are the mini livestock uh, besides the besides the cows, besides uh, porks and the fish and the fishes and all of this. These mini livestock, we know all of these 
uh, because they, uh, this picture shows some uh, ecophyla, smeragdina, some weaver ants. This is some grasshoppers that, and these are some bugs that are used. These are the wild harvesting that are people doing this from the Southeast Asian countries and in, uh, and in, in some places of Africa. They are harvested the insects or the forms of the insects from larvae or the eggs or the maggots or the grubs and the adults. They are harvesting these insects from the wild. Uh, this is the cricket trapping farm in Laos and uh, they, are, uh, they are doing this in their households, I, I guess. And, 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 and uh, in Netherlands, they are cultured the, um, the mealworms, which, which is very popular throughout the world, the mean, mealworm and the uh, um, black soldier flies and the crickets. And the, these are the mealworms in, the, uh, in, some, in, in some places. This is the dried mealworms, which can be packed in some small pouches and can be sell in the market. Uh, these are the these, these are the pictures that are the, some insects are being displayed in some <coughs> vendors' house, and here are some vendors in some local markets in Thailand, some vendors in local markets in Oaxaca in Mexico and in USA. They are uh, selling the insects or other insect products in canned in canned form. And um, these are some these are some insect groups that are being sold in some African countries like Congo's in other places. But uh, most of them, I, I guess, most of them are wide harvested, not uh, cultured, not cultured from uh, in captive breeding or like this. And these are some these are some pictures from Canada's and some in China's. They are selling the insects uh, in boxes in, in 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 shopping malls or in the local markets. And that can be used as a feed for poultry and can be used as a feed for alternative feed, alternative protein rich feed for the poultry, for the fishes, for the, for the uh, pet birds and uh, other, uh, other uh, applications may be used for on, uh, ornamental fishes. Ornamental fish, fish, fish feed can be also a good, uh, a good area where the insects can be used as a feed. And we can use the insects in our diet too. This picture shows the how the um, we can design a insect rearing insect rearing uh, farm or insect rearing strategies or um, this is the rearing strategy or this is the rearing of the insects and uh, this rearing can be in large scale or in the smaller scale. And uh, from that larger or smaller scale, whatever, whatever the scale uh, from re after rearing, we can get the food or the feed ingredients. And that food or feeding that food ingredient can be used in our dishes or that feed ingredient can be used for the uh, uh, for the cows, for the, the other other cattle, for the fishes, for the ducks and chickens and can be used as for the cow, for the dogs and the cat. Uh, cat meals or the cat uh, cat feeds and some pet birds or some bait. We can use the insects as a bait for uh, fishing or in other purposes. And after their waste, uh, when they uh, when they will get the waste, we can recycle that waste and uh, we can use that waste for as a food for the insect development. So this is the fact sheet, or this is the sheets that uh, how the insects and uh, uh, can be cycled, and uh, how the wastes can be recycled through insect propagation, and in between, how the insect food and feed can be useful in our daily life. So this is the thing that uh, the from productions, the from production house to processing, and from processing to distribution, and dis distribution to consumer. So this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, steady facts that we can say that um, uh, some in, in during this process some some processes can be unavoidable because in culturing of insects we cannot uh, if we culture the insects in in in, in uh, uh, captive breeding or in uh, in wild or in some arena in the, in our land then we cannot ignore the environmental parameters uh, we have to use those plants. Which are available uh, uh, near the culture ground because uh, if we um, if we bring the, the if we bring their desirable food plants from outside, then the the cost of that logistics will be higher. So we have to use the local 
local foods for local foods uh, for example the grasses and the other leaves for rearing of the species so investment of the investment is a uh, is a is a fact is a fact factor here because we have to we have to use a smaller amount a smaller amount of money to get the production so keeping in mind we have to we have to process we have to prepare or we have to decide uh, where we have to dis where we where we have to establish our processing or the rearing unit because uh, it is uh, it should be keep in mind that our processing unit or our rearing in unit should be in some places where we can get all their all their avail we can get all their food sources that we can use in their rearing uh this is a uh, this is a figure that uh, or a schematic representation that how the crickets can be uh, reared in our culture house or uh, this is the small some small plastic boxes and from in small plastic boxes we can open some uh, open some ducts through which the air can pass and we can use the uh, vermiculture or we can use some other beds in and, and on the floor of this basket and we can use some male and female crickets inside the boxes for example if we introduce 50 insects in a ratio of 3 to 1 male and female uh, after 3 months we can get thousands of crickets when they will propagate or they they will get they will lay, lay their eggs and the eggs will hatch out but in these cases we have to uh, incubate the eggs near about 29 to 32 degrees centigrade uh, uh, this 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 temperature is very much available in our country so it is very much possible if we can rear the in uh, crickets in a, in some small containers uh, maintaining some a, uh, maintaining a very 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 little amount of investment or maintaining a very uh, lower amount uh, a little amount of attention uh, we can we can uh, Reduce the cricket biomass in shorter time. These are the farmhouse in the uh, in some area arenas in in South Asians where they use some boxes, some uh, some some buckets, uh, use some the egg egg, uh, egg egg containers, and uh, using that boxes they 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 maintain their uh, they maintain their life cycles. That is the cricket's life cycles. And after getting their adulthood, they procure the adults from the rearing chambers and <coughs> goes for the uh, uh, and uh, transport them to the farming, uh, transport them to the market. And before uh, going, they also consider uh, uh, or in case of crickets or in accredited farmings, uh, farmings uh, as I already said, that uh, for a few facts are to be considered before, during this farming as fertility of that species, because we have to select some fertile species because uh, it uh, based on uh, most fertile, most reproductively potential insects would be, uh, should be useful for this mass propagation in our cases, Actia domestica, that is the crickets, and in other grasshoppers like Oxia species, Oxia velox, Oxia phoscovitata, Oxia hyla hyla, Oxia japonica, then other Spathosternum, Spraciniferum, and other insects like uh, other grasshoppers like the um, uh, Hydroglyphus banyan, Acrida exultata, Acrida gigantea. These these insects can be possible to rear in small houses in small in a small um, um, insectarium, sorry, in small uh, uh, wooden, wooden, wooden framed uh, uh, cages. And we have to also consider the nymphal mortality for their culture because lower nymphal mortality ensure greater biomass. It is very important because if we, uh, if the mortality rate, the nymphal mortality rate is higher during their development, we cannot get the desired amount of biomass in out in, in in desired time, and the sex ratio is important because uh, most of the insects, uh, the sex ratio is one is to one. In some of cases, it is four is to five. Some of the cases is three, three is to two. 
So, but most of the cases, the male female ratio is one is to one. So, the sex ratio is also an important factor because based on this sex ratio, we are, we are getting the female number and the, uh, what amount of female number we are getting. From that number, we will get the next number of re pro reprodu reproducing units because the females only the lays eggs and from that eggs, we will get the biomass. So, the female number is important. So, the sex ratio is important here. And the weight, the mean weight, uh, the mean dry weight, and the weight weight of the individual. Dry weight weight may be may vary according to their food habit, but the dry weight we should consider their dry weight. How much dry weight you can get after a certain time of uh, culture? So dry weight is an important thing you know, in this culture. And the next important thing is the space requirement for mass culture. This is very important because we don't have any bigger space for culture. We can use if, if uh, we cannot use a horizon a longer a large horizontal space rather than can we can use some vertical space. So how you can use some vertical space and uh, what amount of space or what amount or what the areas of a cage is required for maximum population survival. That is the important thing. That is the space requirement for mass culture is the important thing. I will come to in my next slides that uh, uh, we, we, we tested uh, with some grasshoppers that what amount of space is required for mass culture of acridics. And the voltine nature of the species, as I already said, the voltine nature is very important. It is a very important thing because some insects are univoltine. So if the univoltine species we select, then we will get only one, one generations per year. And if we get the multivoltine insects, Insects, we will get four or five insects per year. So, the full time nature of the insects is very important. So, selection of the insects, when we will select the insects, full time nature of the insects should be in our mind and the nutritional values and the energy analysis, the calorie analysis of calorie value of the insects is also important. And the next thing, when we really get the biomass, the next was is that the uh, how we can package that insects. So the packaging is also important because uh, as it is a uh, it is a organic substance, so is the chance to get infected by some pathogen. So it should be uh, clearly it should be cleaned. It should be uh, it should be uh, treated with microbial uh, microbial treatments. Maybe may be done, but it is this aspect is uh, is very much less worked on it because we don't have any much literature on it how the insect biomass can be preserved uh, without the microbial infestation or without the microbes and infection so this is a this is a uh, this is the questions uh, but we hope that in newer future this problem can be solved So in uh, harvesting of these uh, adult acridids in some parts of the world, in the Southeast Asian countries and Mexico and in African countries, most of the people are harvested. Um, though some insects are being reared uh, commercially in recent years, but uh, before that they, they do harvesting from the wild. So they, uh, what they did because uh, after harvesting the insects, they freeze that insects in some freezers. They use some, uh, they use some ice blocks for freezing that insects because they don't have any proper freezing system. But instead, instead of uh, 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 though they don't have any the freezing system in their uh, in their capacity, they use some ice blocks in freezing of the insects because after freezing the insects will get die. And after dying, they are insects. They boil the insects. Some some people boil the insects because uh, uh, they think that after boiling, to, uh, after boiling the insects or dipping the insects in some boiling water, they will they can kill some pathogens from the insects, or they can kill the insects when uh, uh, before packaging. And after that. Uh, the next step is that that uh, what kind of uh, product format they will prepare because as I uh, already said that there are maybe different kind of format product. Uh, the whole insect can be a format product, the insect legs and the wings and other parts of the format product. Uh, format product it, it can be the insect oil. 
because some parts, the, the keratins uh, and some other uh, exoskeleton of the insects, they, they can produce the uh, insect oil, which is an another another uh, uh, byproduct, or the we can say in some in some cases another product of the insect. So the whole insect is a is a is a is a thing that uh, is a is a uh, is a product whole insect that can use as uh, in, in dishes, in pallets, or uh, in some plates, in some um, whole insects can be used in some baits, in some, uh, uh, in our, in our uh, anthropogenic dishes, or our dishes. Some insect powder can be, uh, can be used for food fortifications, and some liquids uh, can be used, uh, uh, some insect paste to liquids can be used as some uh, proteins, protein sources. And the insect oils, insect oil industry, as like fish oil industry, the insect oil in industry is also developing these days. Uh, yes, there are some regulatory facts. So they, there are some regulations of using of insects as food and feed. There are some uh, so much prejudices, so much uh, voices against the insects, against the insect foods. Uh, in all over the world, European unions. United States, Canada, Mexico, and where not. In India, we don't have any of this kind of insect propagation, insect commercial farm. We have a few insect commercial farm in India, in some Southeast, in some South Asian, uh, South, in South Asian states, and in Northeast, uh, as, uh, in some South Indian state, and in North Indian, uh, Northeast Indian states, there are some uh, scientists who are working on insect. Uh, propagations, but uh, laws and uh, other kind of uh, regulations uh, from the uh, from the governments, they also raised some voices against the insects as their food or, uh, uh, as, a, as a food for anthropogenic consumption. But I believe that uh, there should not be any uh, voice against its usefulness as a feed. We, in an in Indian perspe perspective, we can use the insects as a feed, as an in initial target. And then if we success, uh, if we can succeed in this achievement, we can shift to food program. These are some, uh, these are some uh, wa uh, worldwide, uh, uh, some rules and regulations regarding the insects, food and fish. I will not go uh, detail in it. I will skip this in. Uh, uh, as we all know that there are some, uh, as are discussed in other uh, uh, other uh, uh, scientists in our uh, in this meeting, they also raised, uh, they also mentioned some uh, laws that are involved in uh, regarding the insects use as food and feed, and the cost. Uh, if we if we rear the insect farm or the crack, uh, grasshoppers or the or the cricket farm in India, there are two things we have to we have to consider in our mind. That is, uh, some uh, there are some overhead cost and there are some recurring cost. So to establish a recurring uh, to establish a farm, a potential farm of cricket or uh, grasshopper rearing, there are some overhead cost uh, maybe uh, classified into. Uh, some establishment of some incubator, establishment of rearing houses, and setting up some environmental conditions uh, like uh, aerations, if the uh, and uh, and uh, light penetrations, etc., and etc., and the land cost where the farm can be set, and uh, some uh, if we if we if we prepare or if we construct some fashioned house or some concrete houses, that um, investment can be. Uh, uh, this kind of investments is also uh, to be noted. And there are some also um, some recurring costs. Uh, uh, in these recurring costs that um, uh, human manpower is a recurring cost because labor cost is a recurring cost that how much, uh, how much amount of money we have to pay per labor per day, that is an important thing. And how much amount of insect biomass and what amount of money we are getting from that biomass is also important thing for us in considering of this recurring cost. And uh, variable costs like the, uh, the other utensils that are used in insect rearing, like some uh, like some plastic swears and like some, uh, some glass wares are needed uh, in this uh, in this kind of uh, rearings. 
So these are the recurring costs and some electricity and the packaging and the advertisement, transportation, and logistics. These are also the some recurring costs. Uh, in our cases, in uh, I already said that the wastes or the waste um, uh, waste substrates can be recycled through insect mass production. This insect some mass production, we will get the insects uh, protein that is our main target thing that is the alternative protein. We will get the oil or the fat fats that is the that is our by we can say this is the byproduct of the insects farming and the other products that is the chitosan and uh, other things that we'll also will get from the insect farming. The another important thing is that uh, after consuming, after uh, what insects consume, the, ins uh, the, uh, the grasshoppers and locusts, they consume the grasses and the other, other leaves or other the, uh, plant debris or the wastes, they defecate. They defecate a certain amount of Fecal matters. That fecal matters is uh, we also tested the fecal matters in our laboratory and found that these fecal matters are all are also rich in protein. So these fecal matters can be used as a byproduct and can be used as a biofertilizer in some uh, biofertilizer in some agricultural uh, agricultural aspects in, in agricultural fields. Or so the insect fecal matters can be used as a byproduct of this insect culture. So I will talk, oh, initially in Indian perspective, we can uh, we can use the insect uh, insect protein. Uh, we can use that insect protein as animal feed, and we can use that animal feed in aquarium feed fishing uh, aquarium fish feeding trials because uh, we know that um, uh, the commercial fish feeding in, in case of commercial fish feeding we uh, generally use the um, the other protein rich substances like the chicken byproducts there is chicken wings uh, chicken uh, chicken feathers and the chicken wastages and the fish wastages we are we are we are uh, procuring that that wastages from the market and also we are we are using some other fishes which are harvested from the uh, seas from the oceans um, so that we use that uh, we use the dry fishes in fish feeding, in commercial fish feeding purposes. So it is the it is the big uh, it is a big uh, question to ask that uh, the fish feeder companies in India uh, they are not so much convinced that, till date that the insects can be used as a feed for their fish feeding purposes so for the uh, initially we can use the uh, we can use the insect protein as animal feed for aquarium fishes because in aquarium fishes we we use uh, some feeds which are mainly imported from uh, the southeast southeast asian countries from philippines from thailand from china and from korea so if we can replace that fish feed the aquarium fish feed through insect meat, through insect feed. So it would be a good uh, initial step uh, in Indian perspective. Because uh, uh, as I already said that the bigger fish, fish uh, feed producing farms are still not interested as insects can be used as the animal, insects can be used as a feed, fish feed uh, for commercial fishing. So these are the strategy making for optimization of the biomass production. The first one is the uh, how we can optimize the biomass production. That is the main target. And then the quantitative and quanti qualitative analysis of the biomass. And from that quantitative, quantitative and quality, qualitative analysis of biomass, we can formulate the aquarium fish initially. This is our initial target. And from uh, we know that uh, this, uh, if we suck if we if we are successful in this initial target or if we can get achievement in this initial target we can convert our fish feed to other commercial uh, commercial fish production like some other carps production or in other other fish production so this is the this is the, the schematic figure that the substrates and the weeds of the animal manuals that that are the low low value the wastes through 
uh, we can use that low value waste for insect rearing and management. And during this management, we have to maintain their hygiene and we have to understand their life cycle strategies, what life cycle they maintain in their, uh, in their, uh, in the life forms. Uh, that is, we have to uh, uh, breed the high quality of uh, and the high number of the insects. We have to increase their growth rate. And all of these are related to their biomass. So a higher biomass means the higher growth rate. If higher growth rate ensures, higher growth rate ensures the higher biomass, and the higher breeding ensures also the higher biomass. So the life cycle strategies or the life cycle histories are very important to understand which insects we are going to uh, culture. And after culturing the insects, the nutritional values and the properties that we already said, then safety and chemical, all the biological and the chemical safety preparations and product evaluations is also effect. Product evaluation is also very much important to note because what insects food or feed we produce that product that uh, we can use that product to some testing animals, that's some testing commercial fishes or some testing, uh, testing, testing fishes for aquarium fishes. If we get some higher growth rate of commercial fishes or commercial aquarium fishes, then that product would be viable, more viable than the other products. So product evaluation is also an important thing. And uh, after product evaluation has been done, then we can go for pelletization of the processed, uh, for pelletization of the food or pelletization of the insects. That is the processing part that is crude and the refined protein. We can, we can use some other proteins or other supplements with the insect protein, we other, other binders. We, uh, these are the common, common things in, uh, in uh, pelletizing of the, in pelletizing of the, uh, I hope, of the fish food. So processing is also very important. And after processing, we have to, we can use that processed food for some commercial fishes, for some uh, commercial fish, uh, fishes, uh, in ornamental fishes in, or other fishes. But right now I, I, I will not recommend in Indian, uh, uh, Indian perspective the, for, uh, for uh, carp farming because, uh, uh, because for this, we need to develop um, a steady state propagation of insect farming in our country because they need steady, uh, because if there is no steady production of insect biomass, then the production unit will not run successfully uh, because of scarcity of the raw product. So there are some re consumers regulations and there are some laws and regulations and there are some cons uh, consumer perceptions. Now I'm coming to the grasshoppers farming that uh, what we are doing in our our laboratories, uh, uh, as uh, already I have uh, mentioned in some other slides, that the lepidopterans, uh, some coleopterans, and some orthopterans are the groups of insects that are being used for uh, in different countries that are being used as uh, as as co as commercial uh, commercial purposes. Well, uh, besides harvesting. Uh, some other groups are isoptera, hymenoptera, and other wasps, etc., etc. So why I have chosen these groups, these orthopteran groups, for my uh, studies? Um, if we consider or if we compare that uh, the orthopteran fact sheets, the orthopteran nutritional facts, which we can see that the proteins uh, near about 50% of protein in, in each. Uh, per gram of uni, uh, per gram, uh, per hundred gram of uh, orthopteran biomass, we can get the near about fifty gram of protein. So near about fifty percent of protein can be get from locust migratoria. It is a uh, locust species, and the fats and the other carbohydrates, fibers. The fibers is very high in case of orthopteras too, like in other insect groups. And uh, this protein content uh, is very as it is very high in orthopteria so i'm interested in these groups of insects because this group of insects are less studied in all over the world for commercial month for commercial farming because in commercial farming there are three giants the one of the meal ones one of the black soldier flies and another is the crickets <clears throat> so acridids i am saying about the acridids among all, though cricket is an though cricket is an orthoptera but i am saying about uh, acridids under um, or orthopera, I am saying about acridids, that is the grasshoppers. So if we consider the grass, grasshoppers, um, now we can say, for example, I have cited two species here, Spathosternum, Prasiniferum, Prasiniferum, and otherwise the Protogonus. 
this species have the these two species have the protein content near about 65 milligram per 100 gram of protein and uh, protein percent is near about 65 percent so in scrotogonus is near about 60 percent and if we see that the if we see the crude fiber and the other uh, other carbohydrates and the fats they are uh, the fat fiber is higher than in other com compared to other meat products but the crude fat and the carbohydrate fat are very less than the other meat products so these are the thing that in say these all grasshoppers are very much advantageous for mass culture uh, in general we can get uh, uh, we can get the protein uh, from grasshoppers near about uh, 20s it is the overall aspects of all the grasshopper species uh, uh, and uh, in our laboratory, we have cultured near about 38 species of grasshoppers. These are the species list in the left axis. In the left scale, we, we, we have tabulated here 38 species of grasshoppers that are we are rearing, we have reared in our laboratories. And uh, uh, this work, uh, we, we, are dying, we are doing this work since 20 years. So these, uh, some of the species are acridas, Acrid exaltata, zygata, zygantia, acrid aturata, some catantrope, some alio, uh, alopus, and some <clears throat> other oxia species and some phalliova species. These are the species that we are rearing in our laboratories. And this grasshopper, these are the laboratory pictures that what we are rearing in this uh, in our in our uh, universities. That is, uh, this is our rearing cages where we breed the grasshoppers in small insect insectariums, and we are using the local grasses in 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 in, in bottled in water filled bottle. And um, these are the species of Hyroglyphus banian, and they are couple. This is the copulating stage, and this is the uh, this is the bigger houses. This is the bigger houses of our laboratory where we maintain simple. We are using a mesh as a to see uh, the grasshoppers, and uh, inside the inside the cabinet we use some electrical bulbs of, and so keep them warm. And there is some pockets through which we we use uh, we maintain uh, uh, we, we, we remove some debris or we if we if if there is some needed to operate inside the cages there is some pockets and uh, these are the egg pods that uh, all we know that the grasshoppers are um, grasshoppers reared their eggs in an egg pod in the soil. We use the we use the sterilized sand in, in some containers, and uh, we sterilize the sand only by boiling the sand uh, in hot water. Uh, and we use that sand after keeping it uh, cool. We use that sand as their ovipositing bed, where the grasshoppers uh, laid their eggs. This is the legs of Oxia fascovitata when they lay their eggs. And if we take a uh, good look in the eggs, there are some, in some eggs, there are some small black spots that are the holes. These black spots, this is the holes where the nymphs emerged out. That is in these egg pods, this is an egg pod, in these egg pods near about 20 to 25 eggs of Oxy of Oxy of Oxy of eggs are there. So the eggs are in a eggs are eggs are here in a, in a cluster form. After some days, they, we incubate the eggs in the incubator, and after that, we the eggs the the eggs are hatched out. The larvae are hatched out. The, when when the larvae or the nymphs are hatched out, they make a pore. This is the this is a pore. So they they hatched out from that pore. When they hatched out, uh, these are the small eggs. This is the small eggs of uh, Hyroglyphus banians. We uh, we just dissect the egg pot and just remove the egg pot and isolated the eggs from that egg pot. This is a single egg like the rice. And uh, these are the, uh, before going that I can, sh I can show you that the, these are the, these are the, uh, uh, from the egg pods, the nymphs are hatched out and there is a small white uh, exuvies called their exoskeleton where they're shredding off there is this exoskeleton and they emerged out from the egg pods. When they are emerged out from the egg pods, we just transferred that egg, egg 
we, we just transferred the names to the some name for the in some well, boxes, some, some bottles. Uh, this was done uh, according, uh, this was done for the purpose of some experiment experiments uh, in which temperature or what uh, what other uh, parameters like the humidities and uh, other parameters like uh, the life cycles they uh, liked for their better development. These are the these these are our experimental setups where we transfer the grasshoppers in some well, in some in some bottles. Uh, in the uh, the names uh, transfer the names in some bottles for some rearing purposes for some experimental purposes and these are the names uh, we can see these are the names and these are another species which are emerged out from their from that eggs and uh, when they will when they will emerge out we will transfer them into we will trans oh, sorry we will transfer them into some re uh, adult rearing cages and after adult rearing cages we will get their uh, dry biomasses this is the dry biomasses of Oxia fuscovitata, this is the dry biomasses of acrid exaltata, this is the dry biomasses of Swathostanum praseniferum praseniferum, and this is the dry biomasses of Oxia, Oxia japonica. So these, these, these kind of biomasses we are getting from our laboratory. Uh, and uh, if we see, uh, I, uh, I, I say that the, uh, we are getting some dry biomasses, uh, how we can estimate uh, how much amount of dry biomasses or how, how much amount of biomass we can get from a pair of grasshopper species. This is, an predicted for, this is a predicted diagram where we can estimate how much amount of dry biomasses we can get or the weight biomass we can get from, the, from, 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 the, from a pair of the grasshoppers. These are the, uh, this, this is the case of Oxia fascovitata. And uh, this, there is, this is a male and the female, though these are the names. And from the, uh, there are some, uh, we, we are using here one male and one female. If we consider this one male and one female, after copulation, the female will lay eggs. The number of lays eggs, 65. That is the fecundity of the oxia phoscovitata of this species is 65. So these 65 eggs all will not go, go to survive because some of the eggs will die during its development or during its incubation period. So these eggs are uh, some of uh, maybe some of eggs may will die. If if we can if we can uh, uh, avoid or if we can uh, take steps of the dying the eggs so the if we can remove the egg mortality then we will get 65 number of eggs. So this 65 number of eggs are uh, they will go for their adulthood. The number of adults, the number of male adults will be 25. And from that eggs, number of female adults will be 20. This ratio is based on their sex ratio. We have calculated this sex ratio. We have analyzed the sex ratio. So we found that out of 65 names, the eggs will get uh, the, the eggs will uh, will be has to names. These names will be uh, transformed into twenty five number of males and twenty five and forty number of females. This is in first generation. So these females, we have to look this these females. These females, when they develop, some names will get died. That is called nymphal mortality or anium. So. After so 40 insects, 40 fem from out of 40 female insects, we will get 25 females after this nymphal mortality. And likewise, after 25, uh, out of 25 male insects, after nymphal mortality, we will get 17 number of male insects. So these 25 insects will go for next time, will go for adulthood, and this insects will lay their eggs in next generation how how much amount uh, how many amount uh, number of eggs that will they will lay they will lay in next cycle near near about 1700 of eggs based on their fecundity so in second generation they will also convert it to or they will also transform into males and the females according to their sex ratio likewise 
in four generation in a year because these insects are multiple time. They can pass four generation per year. So in four generation, we will get near about this much amount of memes, this much amount of this much amount of um, uh, uh, this number of male male individuals and this number of female individuals and these female individuals if we calculate their uh, if we calculate their uh, weight by multiplying their mean weight because we know uh, the uh, the adult insects will have some uh, uh, their mean weight uh, if we multiply their mean weight to this number we'll get 93 kgs of biomass in a year from the male individuals and from female individuals we'll get 372 kgs per year so in a year we will get 420 kgs 420 kgs of biomasses so these insects the important thing is that this this amount we are getting this amount of biomasses from one pair of insects after four generation because in four after four generation they are producing this number of insects this number of males and this number of females insects so th this is there by multiplying their average mean weight and we will get 420 kgs of insect or actually uh, oxia biomass per year so this is a projected biomass that we already tested in some species besides the oxia fascovitata and we found that in other insects they are also uh, they are also going to produce a higher amount of the uh, a bigger amount of biomass so it is possible to uh, through this uh, through these slides we can say uh, if we prepare or if you if we set a uh, rearing farm if we set a rearing farm uh, commercially then this number of biomass we can get in a year so these are the things okay and this is the roadmap of the farming that uh, in the grasshoppers farming uh, we already said that through accredited cultures the we will get the accredited biomass and from that accredited biomass that uh, in our previous slide we said that kind of 440 uh, 420 kgs of accredited biomass that is the weight biomass after drying that biomass we will get the dry biomass of accredits and after grinding that accredit we will get the accredited powder and we will go for the nutritional values, carbohydrates, vitamin, minerals, and toxic substances, if they have, yes, they have some soft toxic substances. And after uh, getting the dried biomass, we can formulate that dried biomass to some fish feed ingredients for accredited rich pellet powder for aquarium fishes or other purposes. And we can use that accredited biomass uh, uh, in some packaging systems and use for marketing. This is the roadmap for accredited farming. And another thing is that that the fecal matter that they produce that accredited feces can be used as a biofertilizer. This is also a byproduct of this of the insects. The another insect is that that I have I skipped here that the insect oil the, the from accredited chitin and the exoskeleton we can extract some ex oils that can be used as insect oil. Mm. <clears throat> and this is the business model if you, if someone want to uh, want to produce or want to do some accredited production houses in some uh, or some entrepreneurs can do this these are the uh, biomass uh, production business model where the breeders can uh, have to make it, have to uh, have to make attention here for the adult breeding and the egg production this is the important thing and when uh, and when uh, the eggs or the adults will breed they will go for insect growth and the management this is also an important thing and this first and the two things are the biological aspects of insect mass production and here needs uh, much research on it how we can propagate the insects in uh, in, in quicker time and in shorter spaces and here 
But another aspect I, we have to consider here that how much of intake means how much of food they need for rearing these insects. Means, uh, as already said, some grasses and some weeds are required for maintaining this, uh, for maintaining their growth. So this is also a research aspect that how much of insect, or how much of, uh, how much of uh, uh, grasses or the other leaves are required for maintaining this kind of production because uh, uh, procurement of their food is also an important aspect because if we don't uh, provide the food regularly, they will die with uh, one or two days. They, they, can, they cannot be uh, starved over three or four days. So these are the three things we can say, the breeding and the production that is growth and man growth management and the, uh, and the uh, food intake. Uh, these are the biological aspects of these of this insects. And the another thing is then incubation. Incubation is also important. The temperature we have to maintain, or we have to research out what temperature is required for a better incubation period. Because all the species, uh, the uh, it, egg incubation period for the species are very much specific. So uh, we have to be careful uh, what important. Uh, what temperature uh, regime is important for a specific insect group for their incubation. And after that, we have to separate the larvae and this separation, we can, uh, we can do this separation through hand picking or some other aspects. Other aspects means we can, we can just blow the air and so that insects can be pass from one chamber to another chamber, but that method is not very much useful because they just grab the insectarium net or insectarium walls. So it is very much difficult to separate from a group of insects from uh, to other group of insects because if they are mingled, they, species A and species B, so it is very difficult to separate out species A from species B because in uh, or rather we can pick the insects by hand picking. We have collect the insects by hand picking. That is the more efficient, efficient uh, process as, as far my opinion, as far my, uh, 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 as far my uh, experience, I can say. And the processing and the making the proteins. This is also the laboratory testing trial units that uh, we have to uh, make uh, some of the proteins and the fats uh, and the other nutritional aspects of the insects and the store and the selling the customers. This is the advertising part of the of this project or of this business model. So these are the business model, a small business model. And here we have to take in some parts and some research, uh, uh, some research parameters uh, should be taken in some aspects of their biological aspects of this grasshopper farming. And we are still doing this, uh, uh, how we can find this process or find this technology um, in a greater aspect. So these are the flow chart that, uh, that the insects can be converted to some other products. This is the business model. And as already said, I, I'm the, in other insects, in, like other insects here is also, they are, uh, they are recycled the natural wastes uh, into, the, uh, into the processed food or in the processed meat and then market and the consumption. And uh, here are the species that we have uh, some species that we have cultured in our uh, in our laboratories. Uh, we I already said this one. Here are some acridus species, and uh, we make some nutritional aspects of this species. We uh, and uh, we uh, some some experiments are all are still going on. Some experiment uh, some uh, nutritional assays are still going on on some species of these uh, acridids. Uh, in, a, in a nutshell, we can say that uh, now these are the protein content of uh, all the acridids. Here, the abbreviated form of the species in the in the in the lower in the lower scale. This is the Acrida gigantea, Acrida exultata, etc. These are the uh, these are the uh, species, and we can say that uh, 
the females, the upper scale is the female uh, protein content and the lower scale are the male uh, uh, protein content. If we see, we can see that the females do have their, uh, sorry, the males do have their protein content near about 50 to 60 percent of the protein they have, where in case of uh, in case of males, the protein content is near about uh, more or less uh, like protein content they have. And we also um, did some their carbohydrate analysis. We also found that the carbohydrates are near about 2.5, near about 2 to 5 percent of carbohydrates they have. And in case of the in case of male and the female, the carbohydrate values are more or less equal, though the female have some a little amount of greater carbohydrates. In case of five, in case of lipids, we see that there are some lipids near about three to five percent. Also, the lipids and the uh, and in case of females, the lipid contents is uh, is greater amount because of its uh, more lipid contents in their ovaries or like or the fat bodies. So. <clears throat> Uh, as a whole, we, we can say that the uh, this is the uh, diagram that can show that the protein content of male and female are more or less equal, uh, near about 55, near about 55 percent of protein they have, and near about five to six percent carbohydrates they have, whereas they're about six to seven percent lipids they have. So this picture shows that the grasshoppers, uh, all these grasshoppers that, uh, that, that uh, the species that we are culturing in our laboratory, all the species are a, are a good source of proteins, good source of proteins we can say. And uh, lipids amounts are very less and compared to other fish product, other other animal other animal protein products, I already said in my previous slides. This is the thing. This is the uh, picture that uh, we have uh, where, when we are rearing these insects. Uh, our question is that uh, what amount of what 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 num in what number we can culture the grasshopper species under captivity. Or in a certain space, we found that the species uh, we considered here 31 species of grasshoppers, and we found that uh, this is the DL1, DL2, DL3, DL4, DL5. These are the density levels. These density levels are, are some specific density levels. These density levels we in DL1, for example, or in DL1 we 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 we. we um, we placed only 10 grasshoppers, then we increase the number of grasshoppers to 20, then we increase the number of grasshoppers to 30, then we increase the number of grasshoppers 40, and then we increase the grass number of grasshoppers to 50. But we uh, maintain the density constant, uh, we maintain the area constant. So there was a density uh, a level, so we marked these densities as density concentration. So in these density concentrations, we found that uh, with increment of their density, uh, the mortality rate goes higher, but after DL3, the mortality rate does not go higher. So this much, this density level, that is DL3, would be ideal for all the grasshopper species uh, for their culturing, and if we if we, uh, if we, plot, we plot this in a dose dose concentration level, uh, 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 so we found a sigmoidal curve uh, uh, where we found that they have a steady state density concentration. So if we if we increase the density concentration steadily, then in some certain points the density the mortality percentage goes higher, but at certain points the mortality percentage does not go higher. So uh, this uh, density level three would be the good one for the species. But uh, here are some points we have to uh, note it here that in some species, so abnormal mortality percentage because some insects we did not, some insects do not uh, did not follow this uh, uh, this model. So these insects showed in our experiment. These insects showed some abnormal mortality rate. So they showed. Uh, but we have to understand what kind of uh, why they are showing uh, this kind of mortality because in density level two or three some insects going very high, so that insect should be avoided in, in culture. This is the uh, this is the main uh, uh, motto of this experiment that which species we have to select uh, uh, for consideration in a 
smaller space for their culture. Uh, this is an another uh, an, another imp uh, imp important uh, findings that we have found in our uh, space uh, uh, space requirement for mass culture of grasshoppers. We found that some species, some species uh, which have their uh, BMI uh, range is different, means their body mass index are different. They show differentially in their mortality percentages. And insects, foods, and uh, you. Uh, uh, the, all these uh, you know, important aspects that we have discussed here that um, the grasshoppers and the locusts can be considered in, uh, in mass culture in our country or in other part of the, uh, in other part of the world. And uh, we are doing this since, uh, in, since 1998. So, we can say that uh, these insects, these grasshoppers or accredited insects could be a potential species or potential insects. Accredited could be a potential, uh, potential insect group, uh, which can be cultured uh, commercially, except crickets, besides crickets, and the besides mealworms and, uh, 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 and the black soldier fly larvae. And these are the uh, these are the some worldwide some uh, informations that these insects are used in different forms that uh, some of these uh, some of the speakers has already told this one that some uh, there are many aspects there are many uh, many advantages the insects can be used in, uh, in in toffee bars in pastas in breads and so in food fortifications the insects or insects in powder or insect meals can be used uh, or these are the, some market products, all and uh, some some dried or some roasted or some uh, insects uh, in some other uh, other forms in canned forms in bottle forms. They are they are uh, selling in the market, and this is the commercial farms uh, where the insects are dried in some dryers and these before growing before uh, uh, powdering the insects. They are drying the insects in this automated dryer machine and the, after the drying they can they can pow they powder the insects uh, for um, either either for food fortifications or for using this insect powder into some other uh, feed formulation for other cattle or the pigs or the um, uh, or we can um, the paid birds or the commercial uh, ornamental fish etc and there are another aspect that some insects are marketed for human consumption. These are some clean, clean foods, and these are some books that Professor Van who is already told about these books in uh, yesterday's in his lecture. So these are some cuisine books. That's the uh, Ramos Lawardi uh, uh, wrote this book. These two books. Uh, these books. Uh, from Mexico, and these are some posts from some UN reports, some Washington, uh, some newspaper posts uh, that the insects can be used. So, thank you. Best of luck. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm coming. Okay. okay. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Armandas. You have elaborately uh, described starting from the uh, origin and importance as well as the uh, briefly describe about the how we go for the rearing of the accredited family, like important species of the grasshopper that we can proceed for the mass production. So uh, 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 now I will request our beloved participant if you want uh, any if you have any query or any questions i'll let you uh, allow to speak directly to dr Admandas. das you have any query so uh, just okay 
in the chat. Uh, uh, yeah. For students, no? yeah, I need no, no questions. Uh, no, 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 one more, one more is there. Let me check. So, oh, no, no, no questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I will enable uh, to ask the question directly. So you please, all of you, if you have any queries, you can ask, sir. Uh, can I ask you can? Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah. Sir, you can uh, disable this uh, stop screen sharing. Hello. Hello. Sir, can you stop your screen sharing? Of yes. course. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Yeah, you can, uh, Dr. Alman does, you can, uh, yeah, directly uh, you can answer to the question. Hello. Hello. Dear participant, Hello. Please. Yes. Uh, Hello. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yes, yes. Hello. Yes, yes. Uh, sir. Uh, continue, continue. Uh, uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes. Hello. Yes, I can. Uh, hear you. Okay, sir. So, uh, see, I have been wearing crickets and black soldier five for the last couple of uh, for the last three years. Okay. okay. So I'm facing a problem of this uh, 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 fungus in. in at the time of incubations of my uh, cricket eggs. Uh, so is there any solutions uh, to avoid this fungus uh, from coming uh, in the, this? Uh, oh. Getting me, sir? Are you getting me, sir? During yeah. cricket reading. Oh. Yes, and I can uh, hear you. OK. Uh, so is there any, uh, what do you say, uh, preventive measures uh, to avoid the fungus from coming in my uh, this uh, cricket's eggs at the time of incubation. Cricket eggs. Uh, yeah. Fungal no, they infection. Are, uh, well, rearing. Fungal cricket. infection. In, fungal infection in cricket mm -hmm. rearing is it, or fungal infection in cricket adult? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, fungus infection. Uh, infection. Uh, yes, fungal infection. Uh, Yes, fungus infection. Fungus infection in, in cricket eggs or in cricket adults? Uh, in eggs. In eggs. Yeah, at the time of incubation. Yeah, it is very difficult to remove the fungal infection from cricket eggs because, you know, the crickets are uh, oviposited their eggs in, in, such, in such a uh, uh, in, in, in such a uh, conditions that where we can, we use some vegetables and the leftovers of the leftover of the vegetables or some other uh, fruit fruit peels so mm -hmm. generally they produce some fungus so when the crickets lay their eggs on that uh, on that particular places the fungus will be infected it is very much uh, uh, there is a very much possibility that fungus will get infected in that eggs Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the uh, thing is that you have to consider what amount of the, uh, uh, at what number the, um, the, the eggs are hatched out. You have to consider the number. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you found, if you found the desired number of eggs are hatching out from your system and if you are getting the higher production, then it would be okay for you besides going to treatment the fungus because there is no such, uh, uh, no such treatment in fungus uh, avoidance in this insects, in this insects eggs uh, till now. Okay, uh, and one more thing is, uh, I've been wearing the black soldier fly also, uh, yes. but uh, <clears throat> uh, they are not mating uh, when we keep in the uh, the room, uh, and we have uh, provided many lights, but I think they are not very sensitive uh, for mating. So, is there any way uh, which you can provide uh, this uh, a company or uh, any light which you can uh, suggest me? What for, for, what photo uh, period do you maintain? Uh, lumen is around one thousand five hundred. No, photo period. What photo period do you maintain? Two, it is twelve hour dark and twelve hour na, na, uh, light. Is it? Uh, it's a uh, twenty four hour lights. I'm providing twenty four oh, hour lights. Uh, you can use twenty four hour. You can uh, twenty four hour light. Uh, uh, uh. You, you use twenty twelve hour light and twelve hour dark. 
So you maintain mm. if you maintain tried... this period. Mm -hmm. I have uh, I have used uh, every possible light, uh, but uh, see, uh, once I kept outside, uh, they start melting. But once I keep uh, inside the room uh, to maintain the temperatures and humidity, uh, and after providing uh, enough light also, they are not melting. Raw. Okay. Yes. Uh, when so, you uh, uh, okay, okay. Okay. So, uh, what? Uh, what I really want to know from you is uh, what are the lights, uh, which uh, company or is there any uh, particular light source, uh, artificial light source, uh, which we can use for uh, this black source of light matting? Okay, you can use the, <coughs> you can use the LED lights or you can use some uh -huh. other lights that we already, uh, that we, uh, uh, the common light, the common bulbs, that you can use these common bulbs and uh -huh. maintain these bulbs. Uh, 12 hour dark period and 12 hour light period, not 24 hour light period. Okay, then so I can say this as per our knowledge on grasshoppers. Though I, I didn't okay. work on the mealworms or the blue, or the black soldier flies. So okay. uh, I did a research on it that what light will be suitable for it. But in case of grasshoppers, I can say that the uh, normal, normal light that is not mm -hmm. normal bulbs uh, one mm -hmm. 100 watt bulbs is useful mm -hmm. for KG, uh, for uh, maintaining of grasshoppers in in, uh, in captive in captive rearing. So okay. uh, basically, I cannot say for the black soldier fly larvae mm -hmm. because I didn't work on it. Okay, Scientifically, okay. I cannot say this one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very uh, happy to know that Ninkyosa Max, uh, you already started in IT. Uh, where are you from in Imphal? Where are you staying? Hello. Max, uh, yeah. you hear me? Uh, yeah, 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 I can hear you. Uh, where, uh. Uh, where did you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm where from, did you uh, started this, uh, this one? Uh, my farm is at uh, Singda yeah, Dam. Yeah, it's Sinda Dam. Okay. Uh, okay, Sinda Dam. Okay, it's uh, uh, okay. So, uh, how big it is means uh, is it uh, from the you have said from the last two three years you have started. So uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, this uh, uh, black soldier flies as well as this uh, ricket, uh, it is specifically used for the feed. In which feed you are using this one? Uh, see. Uh... Uh, for cricket, uh, uh, I'm selling uh, uh, for human consumption, and uh, oh. and black swans fly is in 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 a, a very initiative stage right now. Uh, but I'm trying it because uh, oh. see, I could not uh, m multiply uh, in a huge quantity because uh, the only problem which I'm facing is that light. Uh, they are not matting. Once I keep outside, then they start matting. But once I keep inside, uh, see uh, to control the temperatures and humidity. So uh, they stop matting. The only problem is that that is why I cannot uh, produce in the bulk. Uh, but uh, for cricket, oh. uh, I'm producing in the bulk and I'm supplying to the this uh, what do you say uh, to the vendors and restaurants. Oh, to the local market. Uh, hello. Is it to the local market? Yeah, local is market. It, is it uh, you are supplying to the local market? Yes, local, local market. Local market. Yes. Oh, okay. market. And, uh, I'm very interested to know that. And uh, how much uh, income you earn out of that? Means is it profitable or not? Yeah, it's quite profitable. Uh, see, Your I could income return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the return is huge. Uh, it's quite profitable. I am selling around eight uh, eight hundred per kg. Uh, yeah. Also now, uh, eight eight hundred per kg. Um, it's quite profitable. But oh, uh, see, great. uh. The yes. amount uh, which I'm producing is very uh, small. That is why uh, uh, see, I cannot produce uh, in a large quantity. But uh, the end result, okay, the, the profit uh, is it's huge. It's huge. Okay. Definitely, I'll visit your place when I come uh, back to home. Uh, right now, I'm in Arunachal Pradesh. If I know a little bit uh, early, then definitely I must visit your place. I'm sure, very sure. happy and interested yeah. to know that already you have started. And uh, uh, I think I uh, being a young entrepreneur... How I'm... we are doing this? Hello, sorry, sir. 
Max, I am also interested to, uh, to visit some of your places when I will uh, meet uh, Professor Shantiwala in his uh, university, in her university. <laughs> so I, uh, I am also interested to visit your place. To see uh, how sure, your sure. Uh, because you know, in sir. India, is, there, are very, there are not much people are doing insects rearing commercially, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For the last decade, I'm just as a researcher, I'm documenting and collecting and I'm gathering the information. I'm working for the last 14 years on edible insect. But as a researcher, I have not uh, this one started the rearing activity of the this one for the commercial venture and all. But mm -hmm. I'm very, very happy to know that you have already started. And that is also for the last two, three years. Yeah. <laughs> it's a surprise to me to know that. And can you please uh, own your video so that I can see you? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Your sure, sure. sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, very nice. Definitely, uh, I'll contact you and I want to get your uh, this one details. And uh, any more, okay, uh, yeah. participant, any more question? And I'm very in this hello, very happy to know that. Uh, it's very bad information that you. have started. And yeah, I congratulate you for this success. Any participant, you, uh, you, do you, you want to uh, can I ask, ask any query? Dr. Shandabala, can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sir. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Dr. Amlan, it's a, a nice uh, presentation and it is, you, you covered everything, you know. Uh, from your experience, uh, can you just tell what, what, uh, how one should be prepared? Maybe can you just tell what are the gaps uh, maybe in the future researchers and the future uh, the, the, the people who are going to practice uh, some take home message on that what you need to be extremely careful on on this grasshopper work yes that, yes so now uh, i can say you that uh, the main of the main big question in india is that the human prejudice and the uh, and the people's thinking on insects uh, farming and insects rearing commercially because the people know and in some uh, when i applied in some government organizations they're also asking so many questions that if the insects can fly to the agricultural land what happened they uh, they ask other some questions that uh, how the insects can be used in our country because because we have some other wastes like the uh, slaughterhouse wastes, we have the chicken wastes, we have the fish wastes, so we can use that uh, protein uh, protein substances to other fish feed formulation or other feed formulations. But why we should go for insects? My, uh, my, uh, this is the main thing that we have to shift our uh, thinking that the insects protein is something is uh, different from that slaughterhouse waste is protein because insect proteins are much have have much advantages than the other insects group of uh, than other uh, other protein sources and it is a different thing and the second so the human prejudice and the human thinking is the main object main of uh, questions in our country the next thing is that the scientists who are working on the insects uh, rearing group in india is very much less i uh, i hardly found uh, 10 people from uh, across India that they are uh, uh, rearing insects commercially. So uh, as I uh, agree with Professor Shantiwala that uh, well, I am, uh, that a very few people from the Northeast uh, India and some other uh, South Indian states, they are, all, they are producing insects, but in all over India, the research is very less. These are the things and if we concentrate on the rearing itself, on the subject itself, the, thing, uh, the main problem is that we have, we still, we don't have any processing unit. That is the main thing. We have bioresources. We have the capability to produce their biomass. But after biomass production, how we can process the insects commercially? That is the very uh, that is the uh, that is the uh, lacuna at the present time. Dr. Amlan, because you mentioned that the protein what we are getting from insects, 
is it different from the protein we are getting from other slaughter based and has any study showed that this protein can elevate a certain genetic expression in the fishes if that has been used in the fish feed compared to the other proteins coming so people are really looking at the growth rate and the growth benefit in the fish is any comparative study you are aware of uh, to show as a background data yes now uh, the genetic resources or the genetic uh, analysis of that uh, or the some other fine uh, analysis of insect protein yes we, i i did not uh, uh, what on on what on this before uh, we also we only concentrate on how we can uh, manipulate the rearing how we can develop the rearing and the insects uh, that are available in our uh, I, uh, in our environment, how we can use that bioresources for rearing. We did not do any uh, genetical aspects of these insects in compared to other protein uh, from uh, slaughterhouses or etc. Okay, that so maybe some 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 researchers yeah. must do that. Yeah, uh, the other question maybe uh, Max also can answer that. Uh, will we have to remove the gut altogether before we consuming this because? Normally, gut is the place where we see all unwanted microbes and pathogens live, and symbionts. So symbionts for the insects live, and arbovirus on the whole insect body. So because this is the time we are all worried about this uh, pathogen transfer from wildlife to the human beings. So, so will we have to process uh, uh, that? Because I am from coastal Kerala. So we used to remove that gut system from the prawn, although that is a tedious job, many will not do. We will be taking out that thread of that dirt in this passing through the center. So will we have to remove such a gut system from the insects before you consume? Yes, that would be a very good idea that the, if we remove the gut system, but that is this would be that would be very tedious uh, tedious work you know from all the insects uh, you, you you have to remove the gut yes, as yes, we do yes. as as we do uh, remove the gut from the prawn it is very mm, tedious so it's a very tedious very job tedious. so from insects all the insects if you remove the gut from the uh, grasshoppers or the locusts then it would be a very tedious for a uh, tedious job but we can say okay. that as insects are consumed only the plant leaves so uh, uh, if we can if we can roast the insects or if you can boil the insects to a certain temperature that we have to identify at what temperature would be ideal uh, for uh, for uh, perishing all kinds of microbes inside the guards and above the exoskeleton that would be a, uh, a that would be a, that would be more feasible for feed production i am not i am not suggesting here for food production because food production needs some more precautions before going to our plates. Thank you, Dr. Amlen. I will keep in touch with you, not only with you and also with the Shandival and others. Um, many questions are waiting, so I'll keep you, if you keep in contact by email. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, yes, you're welcome. Then Hello. I do, uh, Hello. Dr. Yeah, I think it was not clear. She was responding yeah. to my query, I guess. Yeah. Yes, it was. His uh, her voice was not clear. So, uh, uh, Dr. Sinu, are you working with insects production in Kerala? Uh, not yet started. I, I'm beginning with the ecophila because I have friends are doing this in uh, parts of Western Ghats. So I'm tying up with them and because I'm in the university system, there are students interested in basic aspects of the food. Uh, by studying their uh, amino acid profile, how they are increasing and all. 
and yes. uh, i am i am in the step of you know <laughs> transforming myself as you know you know i am in more into the pollination research so okay. but the students are dragging me to you now start with the ecophila first and termite because parts of this uh, western ghats people are practicing and they are even consume even i consumed ecophila is uh, pretty good uh, chutney they used to make a chutney powder of it and uh, it's very good we used to mix it with the coconut and have it a very nice food actually yeah so that's what I, 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 I also uh, found some information that in australia they use the ecophila uh, ecophila juice i mean uh, they extract oh. the ecophila's gut and they extract some juice and they marinate the juice because that is full of um you know the the acid acidic so they use some uh, that juice for marinate the meat and fishes i can send you some ecophila chutney powder next time i think during the december they harvest it really very nice yeah. october november they harvest and they preserve it for 6 7 months in the dry form so the dry form they preserve yeah uh, i know it is a very tedious uh, process to remove the gut but my wife used to remove that from okay. the prawn from the prawn because yes. uh, some people get allergy uh, for the seafood like this shrimp and uh, um, crab and all all that is a plenty here but some people get allergic to this uh, gut gut uh, issues Is yeah, it? in the gut of the prawn some toxic content that is why uh, it, people get allergy out of it yeah. Uh, yeah so as i told you regarding the insect here a tradition it is a good practice they keep starvation for 20 at least for one day so it uh, get a chance to remove through excreta all the content uh, was removed through excreta so okay. starvation they keep it for uh, this one one day so it is also a good practice to remove the unwanted thing and uh, like, i want I also to, uh, want to add here one thing uh, uh, um as my experience i can say that uh, uh, in case of grasshoppers we should not go for adult hmm. because they have you know they have oh. the six larval uh, six nymphal stages if we go for fourth <laughs> or fifth larval stages that would be ideal for consumption because uh, the larvae only consume the tender leaves only the tender leaves oh. they do not <laughs> consume the uh, the matured leaves and the other other wastage so if we consume the fourth or the fifth instar uh, grasshoppers then the chitin will not be developed the chitin is not developed here the wings are also uh, a, uh is not developed no, so much no. so the fourth or fifth insta nymphs would be ideal for consumption I, then i'm going to do with uh, some because they are damaging my jasmine plants <laughs> it's plenty here <laughs> plenty of this uh, grasshoppers on my jasmine yeah, plants yeah. plants <laughs> my worry also kerala i am from kerala yeah. yeah my here uh, i was uh, uh, at what point also hearing of super dolman so is a place and it a place for and how control suppose if it goes beyond our ability at school always very need so if we uh, this one enter for the rearing of the grasshopper and in future if we may not face any troubles or some from the legal uh, government any issue my come up or not was my worries so far any... so far such a, a regulation has not come because it is not very commercial people farmers particularly those who are uh, owning coffee uh, coffee plantations so the ecophila is a major insect in the coffee and we allow uh, ecophila to grow there because it's one of the pest control agent also yes. and uh, the people over there uh, harvest them during the month of october november during the month of i think so yeah i think it is october november and then it will be there for till next uh, february i mean this uh, uh, april may time so so basically the farmers uh, dr shantabala you missed that uh, the, the farmers who have certain uh, plantations like cashew plantations so uh, we get lot of ecophila going and we have coffee plantations so we get uh, ecophila going and these people farmers harvest it and they have a traditional method um, to harvest it and to process it and to keep it in dry form for 6 months they are telling that the shelf life is about 6 months in the, when it is a dry form yeah grasshopper not nobody yes that is you have to unmute dr shandebala you have to unmute 
अन प्लीज अनम्यूट मैडम डॉक्टर शांति शांति वाला प्लीज अनम्यूट Three months were experimentations and uh, growth ratio varied about three percent now. So already two months here, uh, the participants have been my work close. Uh, so in all, they are not a commercial purpose. Only for the research purpose, we have started. Okay. Any uh, any uh, participant you want? Hello, sir. Sir, hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sir, a, a small query for my side. Uh, if we have to initiate the uh, insect farming privately in a common park, do there uh, in the India do we have a special committee or certain legislation from where we have to take the permission? Sorry. Can yeah. you please can you please say again? Yeah, sir. Uh, if we have to start a uh, insect farming, yes. In India, do we have a uh, ethical committee or certain uh, legislation from where we have to take permission? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Till, till date, India uh, in India there is no kind of laws or there is no kind of regulations that, as I as far as I know, yeah. there is not required any permission from anyone. Okay. But still there are some uh, some some uh, some talkings in this aspects are going on as i yeah. heard in some officials yeah that in recent future maybe there are some uh, there are some rules and there uh, there will be implemented some rules or regulations uh, in insect rearing or farming or like this but right. we have to keep we have to keep in mind that we will not destroy the natural resources Or yeah. will not uh, will not destroy the bio resources, the biodiversities. Rather, yeah. we have to culture or in captivity or under control culture in uh, in your uh, farmhouse or in your laboratories or whatever may be. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, like prawn culture, it can be an alternative culture, uh, or yeah. like. Like other other culture, other fish culture, it would be an alternative culture. So till now we don't have any laws, as far as I know. But if anybody knows about some other laws that have that have been implemented, that that uh, some proposals, uh, if if anyone know, can inform here, okay. or can inform me later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Still, I also think that still there is no law for the uh, this one restriction of rearing on. Uh, for rearing of these uh, insect in India, still such legis uh, uh, this law is still not yet formed. Uh, 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 Doctor Das, I just wanted to know, still these uh, uh, rearing of this one cricket, still it is preserved in your laboratory, still in the University of Calcutta. Uh, I worked on grasshoppers, not the in crickets. I worked on uh, acridids only. Also, oh, okay. So I did it in our laboratory. Mm -hmm. I did it in some other places. Mm -hmm. I also um, trying to establish some uh, some grasshopper rearing farm in some villages, but that needs some uh, uh, you know some needs some support from the government or other NGOs or other entrepreneurs that I am looking for. <laughs> no, very better that I am looking for this very much. No, no, no. That is the government. <laughs> But till now, I did not give it. Yeah, so yeah. I respected my no, no. work in laboratories uh, till date. Okay. So all Which the year that I have, have that is a uh, that is a laboratory research result. Okay, okay, okay. Means I mean, oh, I'm asking whether still it is maintained in the University of Calcutta. Uh, still, it is there. Means you already work in the foreign uh, country also. So that's what yes. I'm asking. Still, you are maintaining in the Calcutta. Yes. I uh, the biological okay. part of the grasshoppers farming. I all I I completed a major part of the biological aspects. Now I am concentrating on the chemical aspects. Now I am doing the chemical profiling of these grasshoppers, uh, especially the amino acids, the uh, other toxicants, what they have, vitamins, minerals, and all of these things. And other aspects we are doing uh, right now. We are uh, just we have completed one work on their density dependence mortality test. That what kind of What kind of uh, or um, what sort of uh, area is required for rearing of grasshoppers? So, 
besides biology, I am concentrating mainly on their chemical parts right now. I did some chemical uh, profiling of these grasshopper species, but still there are some uh, there are some other aspects of uh, other chemical aspects that I have to concentrate right now. That I am concentrating right now. Uh, okay, and one more last question. No, it's not a question; it's a curious. Uh, just for curiosity, I wanted to know. Few uh, days back, uh, many uh, some of the uh, this one, my colleague, uh, this one asked me that. Uh, you should not encourage the consumption of the grasshopper. So at that time, I said I didn't uh, encourage the, any consumption of any new edible insect or whatever the traditional people consume that I'm documenting and like it. So their question is that one species recently in the Manipur, uh, that new species was come, uh, not a uh, new report was come up that they're reporting that it might be a uh, poisonous. So encouraging of consumption of any type of this one, grasshopper will create a uh, harm to us. So no, well, that no, species, no. I forgot that then, but it is a very colorful one. And yes, yes. Uh, this one, uh, foam, uh, they uh, excrete the foam for the protection or for the uh, incubations of their egg like yes, that. So yes. I don't know which species that one. Yes, that is, so uh, is, it, that is, is uh, I, I guess that is P. pictus. That is very colorful. Okay. In, that is very much available yes, in yes, South. Yes, colorful. Yes, that is very much available in South India. But uh, in my talk, mm -hmm. I, I, I already said that the selection of the species is very much important. So as mm -hmm. I have, uh, we have already selected some species uh, mm -hmm. and they have passed all the quality control assessment. I mean, I, what we have did in our laboratory that mm -hmm. um, that insects are not toxic at all. So these insects, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we can consider that out of 38 uh, grasshoppers, preliminary we have selected mm -hmm. 11 insects which are very okay. highly potential for their biological, for their biomass production. And out of 11 preliminary selection, what we have selected in our preliminary study, we selected mm -hmm. that, uh, we, we selected those insects based on their reproductive potential and other aspects, biological aspects. Then we go for their nutritional aspects. We saw that the uh, nutritional aspects are more or less equal. So we can consider the 11 aspects, but still out of 11, we have selected only six, six insects mm -hmm. uh, for mass culture. And we have uh, discriminating these six insects based on their uh, uh, whole time nature because some insects, uh, which may be the useful, but they are not found or they, ha they have one life cycle or two life cycle in a, in, in a year. I mean, they mm -hmm. have a longer egg incubation period. So that insects would not be desirable for our culture system. So mm -hmm. we have to select those insects which are multi whole time, though they have a, a little amount of lesser protein but they can breed rapidly and they can produce larger biomass continuously throughout the year. That should be very important in this mass culture success. Okay, thank you very much. Any other uh, query? Any participant want to know from Dr. Alman Das? Uh, I think- uh, Thank you very much. There is no thank question. you very much for inviting me in this lecture and I am very much uh, thankful to you and your university for inviting me and give me, give me this opportunity to talk this uh, to talk this aspects and my research work and my grasshopper farming uh, methods that are uh, and grasshopper farming informations to the audience. Thank you very much, Professor Shantiwala. Yeah, thank you. I'm also very thankful for accepting my proposal and, and to be joined with us in this workshop and you know, for sharing your valuable information. Once again, thank you. And once again, thank you all the participants for present hearing. And for tomorrow, we have uh, the very imminent uh, speaker. So in morning section, it will be started from 10.30. Please join with us. And till the end of tomorrow is the last day. So till the end of this uh, program, please join with us. So thank you once again. Uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So let us. Uh, for today, let us wind up here. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye.